you want milk? What? With your Americano. You don't put milk in an Americano. It's the only one you don't put milk in. That's why they call it an Americano. Not a latte, for example, or a cappuccino. You're the guy that killed the bear. So? Coffee expert, too. You're welcome. An Americano with milk. Soaking it in. Taking in the audience. Dennis, thanks so much for Good being here. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Ricky. Good afternoon, Mr. Quaid. Thanks for being here, man. Congratulations. Season two of Fortitude. Yeah, okay. So season two and season one picked up by Amazon this year, right? Right. How did you get involved with the show to begin with? Uh, very good news about Amazon picking up Fortitude. It's a show that really does belong at Amazon. Um, I um, was contacted, uh, what, last year? Was it last year? I think it was, or the year before, on September and... Uh, that they wanted me to do season two. And uh, I'd never seen the show before, like uh, I think most people in this country. But uh, the show originated in, in the UK. And then after the first episode, it just exploded into uh, some 40 or 50 markets. And uh, Shoot it in Iceland, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, so they contacted me and wanted me to do it. I, I talked to uh, the writer, uh, creator of it, Simon Donald, and uh, he ran me through the character. And rather than tell me the story, he sent me the first season. And uh, by the first episode, I wanted to be a part of it. So I just binge watched the entire thing, of course. And um, then next thing you know, I'm over in Iceland and England. And uh, it was really quite an adventure. It was fantastic. What about the show uh, made you want to be a part of it? Was it the, the genre or the fact that it sort of mixes and blends lots of genres? It's just the story. It's the story. There's nothing like it on television. I that, that. that I've seen. I, I, I have it. You know, it, it, it's hard to put a label on it. In fact, I've heard the, like the term sci-fi thrown around or thriller or this and that, but it's, you know, maybe a little bit of all that, but it's definitely not like going to school about it or anything. I mean, even the characters in the show are confused about what's going on. And that's what makes it so like interesting to watch. But basically it's uh, the premise of the show is nothing rots underneath the ice. And in this, uh, there's this little island north of Norway, and it's kind of based on truth, too, that it's the northernmost habitable place on Earth. And uh, there's this community up there, and the polar caps are, are melting around them, but nobody mentions global warming. It's, it's, you know, the social issues are really not on the table, but it's just happening. And uh, because of this, a giant woolly mammoth that's 100,000 years old, perfectly preserved, gets uncovered in the ice. And inside his belly is our wasp larvae that are also 100,000 years old. And pretty soon, uh, there's a murder. And there's never been hardly even a crime in, in fortitude ever. And uh, then people are acting strangely. And I myself, I play... a. Uh, a character, my character is, is Michael Lennox. I'm an expat American uh, in this community, and I'm a fisherman out on the Arctic Ocean. And my wife, separate from anything that might be happening with these wasps or whatever, is she has Lou Gehrig's disease, and she's, it's terminal. But I just refuse to accept that I will do anything and my quest is to save the love of, of my life that I've been with for 30-some-odd years. And just now that I won't let her go. I'm going to have to find something. Now, is the wasp larva causing the people to act strangely? Or is that not necessarily explained? And, and we don't know. They just happen to be happening at the same time. Well, without, giving, without really giving a spoiler, you know, the evidence points to that. So, um, and... Nobody really understands it, and the government won't tell them anything, and uh, people get quarantined on the island, and if you get sick, you, you can't leave the island, and uh, these people are just trying to live out their lives. But it's, it's, a, it's a microcosm, in a way, for what could actually turn out to be a huge global event over this thing that, doesn't, that may get out of control. I don't know. 
I mean, I really, I really, I don't know because I, have, I haven't seen season three yet. <laughs> so I thought you were talking about global warming as a whole. Like no, what we'll has, find they, under they, the ice. They don't mention social issues. They don't. They just don't. It, everything is kept on the personal. Yeah. You know what's in my day type of thing. Just like you know, we get up here in New York and. You know, we, we hear things, but we go about our day. We're more concerned about ourselves. It reminds me a little bit of John Carpenter's The Thing from the early 80s with Kurt Russell, you know, but except a bigger world. It, yeah, but no. <laughs> amazing, I mean, that's an, an incredible It's sort movie. of like Fargo, but no. And, uh, you know, or it's kind of like Twin Peaks, but, but no, no, it's not. And, uh, but, uh, so... <laughs> It's its own thing, and people in the future, hopefully, will be saying, well, you know, it, it's kind of like fortitude. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, that would be the greatest enough. compliment, right? But it, it's, it just comes down to that it's, it's a really great story, yeah. and it, it will hold you. You've played so many roles over the course of your career, and I feel like in the last few years we see you expanding even more into doing comedy comedy roles a lot more as well. I mean, we see you on Inside Amy Schumer a few times. Do you find that because there's so many more things to do, so much more content out there, that you get to do a lot more as an actor and expand your, your reach a little bit? Uh, yeah, I just, I just do what I... These days I kind of do what I, what I like. You know, I'm attracted to do, doing things that I've never tried before or just give it a whirl. I just want to enjoy myself, basically, is what I want to do. So what was it yeah. like when uh, Amy Schumer approached you to be in her show? Uh, I, well, that's the deal. Anytime I, uh, I had fear, you know, fear goes through your body because, you know, it's great comedians or whatever. And uh, anytime I have fear, if I'm offered something and I have fear goes through my body, then I, should do, I feel like I should do it. Did you have fear about fortitude? Yeah, yeah, sure. What was, what was well, the I'm stepping into you know, a cast that already been there for, uh, for a season. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, in Iceland and, uh, you know, I did, didn't, didn't know who this character was and, uh, if they wanted me to do an accent or this, the, turns out everybody, it was just, it was a very international cast, but yeah, I did feel, I feel that pretty much about when I, on the first day of any, anything I do. Have you ever had a job where that fear didn't go away throughout the entirety of filming? You were still scared of the role every day? No. Well, see, I think fear is a good thing. See, I think uh, it's because fear is really, uh, it's energy, and, and you just need to learn to harness it. And uh, it's a great motivator, fear. It really gets you off, up off of your ass and working really quick. <laughs> so... Speaking of fear, I mean, you know, 15 years ago, I, I believe it was 15 years ago, you started a band called Dennis Quaid and the, and the Sharks, right? And you are, uh, you're, go you're going on tour with, with ZZ Top, right, in May? Is that true? Yeah, we're going to play a couple of dates in uh, Texas. Have you ever toured with ZZ Top before? No, never have. I'm a you know, big fan of Billy Gibbons. And, uh, I grew up in Texas. I grew up in Houston. And, uh, uh, in fact, I think Billy went to the same elementary school that I did, you know, without the beard uh, in elementary school. <laughs> He came out uh, of the womb with that beard. It just no. came out so, hitting licks. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to do several other dates down there too. Do you get fear when you're opening for a band like that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, for of course. There's, uh, you know, what's going to happen? Was ZZ Top a big influence on Dennis Quaid and the Sharks? Oh yeah, for sure. Well, oh, on me for sure, and for all you know, on rock and roll, yeah. ZZ Top was. How often do you uh, write songs? Uh, whenever they come up. I always have. I mean, ever since I was like 12, I've, I've, when I got my first guitar, my grandfather bought me a, like a $15 uh, Kmart guitar, and I learned to light my fire. Not the Jose Feliciano edition. <laughs> the Doors. And uh, then, you know, I started writing songs. When you got to play uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, was that... I mean, I can't imagine more fear. I'll, I'll get off the fear thing in a minute. But I can't imagine more fear than playing Jerry Lee Lewis, especially someone who was an aspiring musician at the time. Uh, for sure. I mean, I had a year to prepare for that. And I didn't... A year? I, uh, yeah, I didn't play piano. I played guitar. And uh, so it was all about getting that left hand or at least make it look like you had it because that's where it's at. And uh, so I had some really great teachers. And then... Uh, you know, and Jerry Lee was on the set <laughs> every day. <laughs> what was that yeah. like? And Jerry Lee carried a bottle of Seagram 7 in this pocket and a 
38 in this. And, and uh, he was behind me the whole time going, you got it, you're getting it wrong, son. You're getting it wrong. So. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you traumatized when I you were I was the stepchild, shooting? Jerry Lee. <laughs> was that kind was of... He was getting me up. Yeah? Yeah. It wasn't traumatizing at all as an actor? No, for maybe for about two minutes. And then I went... Mm. <laughs> you can curse if you want to. You can, you can say what you said to Jerry Lee Lewis. Yes. <laughs> That's unbelievable that they let him on but set. He was, a, he was really great. He was one of my piano teachers. And uh, he was... Uh, I mean, he opened up his whole world to me. Really, and you know, he was just hard on me because he wanted it perfect. He's a perfectionist. He's also uh, a virtuoso as far as a piano. I, mean, I saw him sit at a piano one time in the recording studio for 12 hours straight without a bathroom break and just play. Why? Because they weren't rolling. He just loved to play. Is that unheard of to have a year these days to prepare for a role? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Was that like yeah. they, they had greenlit the movie and then Less they were like, for, now you have Except for about year? four actors these days. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would, would you want a year? Would you want more rehearsal when you do a movie or, or do uh, a show? You no, know, it depends on what it is. Yeah. You know, that, that would be the thing. You know, if, uh, if you have to learn something very difficult or whatever, the more time you have, the better. Would you call your performance as Jerry Lee Lewis and, 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 and doing that performance with him around the most challenging role of your career? I'd say one of them, yeah. Or some of the others. Well, you know, well the, the other ones are like the, you know, the physical thing. The rookie was actually very uh, challenging in that I was playing a, a pitcher, a, you know, a real guy. Thank God I was left-handed like him. And uh, he was on the set every day, too. Really? Those real-life people, darn it, they just love to come on the set. <laughs> I can't imagine doing <laughs> They're that. They're like actors. They're so self-involved, they would just want to watch themselves all the time. But Jimmy Morris, he was, he was fantastic. He helped me a lot. And... Uh, that's really my, like my favorite part of filmmaking is the research and, and learning how to do all that skills. You know, I get to do things and, and uh, that I would never get a chance to do if I had a regular job. And I had like six months to, to uh, you know, to throw. And every Friday, in fact, during the learning process, I got to go down to Dodger Stadium in an empty stadium and throw on the mound. That's and incredible. Dodgers, oh, it was, it was, it was, that was magical. Yeah, did you feel like a uh, king, kind of like empty stadium? Uh, I felt like a 12-year-old kid is what I felt like. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with, with all the pictures of Sandy Koufax, Don Drysdale, I mean, uh, Valenzuela, all the people that had pitched on that mound. It was pretty amazing. Unbelievable. You've made uh, so many movies over, over the course of your career, so many incredible films. Are there any that you... Most people can't go back and watch their own work. Is there any that you can go back and watch that you check out every now and then and, and still really yeah, enjoy? Yeah, if I'm surfing around, and th th there it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll st stop and watch a little bit of something. But I relate to it differently than an audience member because what I remember is uh, what, I, what, what was going on that particular day in my life or, you know, what was happening on the set or, uh, I, you know, not really a, a judgment about whether that's good or not or whatever this is. Right. Yeah. What's the last I've, film I've that... become kind of immune to watching myself. I'm not so judgmental of myself. Really? Yeah. That's one of those things where I've always found if I'm watching myself... I'm not an actor, but if I was watching something that I'm in, if I can't edit it or criticize it, I can't handle looking at it. Really? Yeah. You got to get over that, Ricky. <laughs> it's, already, you know, it's, already, it goes... it's already passed. It's gone. Let other people judge it. <laughs> Bring out the couch. Let me tell Dennis Moore that Let I Let other people that judge you. <laughs> Fortitude. Uh, let's go back to Fortitude for a second because it's such a cool show and it's such an uh, incredible atmosphere that they create. It's so creepy and weird, and one thing that I love is that it's kind of kind of gory. It, 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 got some, it has some horror elements in it as well. Death ain't pretty, Ricky. Exactly, death ain't, pr ain't pretty. Even in the ice. Do you, you haven't, have you really been a part of, of a horror movie before or any kind of genre like that? Uh, I can't think of one. Not really, no. No, uh, yeah, no, no, not really, no. <laughs> You just went over your own IMDb yeah. in your head, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, see, I don't, I, just, I don't see fortitude as horror, you know? I see, it's, you know, and they're in the laboratory, so they're allowed to scientifically pull those guts out. It's like being, you know, in lab in, in science class where you're dissecting the frog type of thing. What do, you, what do you think being around all those gut props and heads and all that stuff? 
Uh, well, we used to go in uh, every morning to get makeup, and you know that's where everybody ate breakfast and everything in this hall. And they had these shelves, and they have all the bodies uh, st- <laughs> just stacked there on different shelves. You know, severed heads and you know whatever, some sort of removed spine or whatever. And you see your fellow cast member's head, and you go, "Oh, I didn't know he was out of the show." So, <laughs> because in Fortitude, if you're dead, you're out. Uh, let's turn it over to the audience for some questions. Who has questions out here? Hi. Who's got the, oh, How yeah. are you? Um, I was wondering, do you have any advice for actors trying to break into the industry? Ah, <clears throat> uh, sure. What do you want to know? Anything you could tell me. Well, I, first off, you've got to want it. Want it really bad. It's got to be your passion, the thing that you can't help but do. And you, you, you've got to want it so much that even if you weren't paid, that's what you would be doing. Uh, and uh, then from there, it's, you have to do something every day to, to achieve that goal. And you've got to dream big. Go ahead and just dream big. You don't have to tell anybody, but in, in your head, talk between you and, and the Lord or whatever, or it, you, you, your higher power, and uh, dream big. And then do something every day that give me a little, little inch of the way along. Start calling up casting directors. Find out you know, who they are just going for a general meeting. You know, even if it's not for a role, just get used to being in interviews. That's a big hump to overcome, how to be in an office and not like mine. It's like I started calling up casting directors in the back of Variety because everybody, uh, all the agents had turned me down. And uh, so I called up casting directors and nine out of ten would say no and one would say yes. And I went in and then the first three or four of them, I would just look at my shoes when they were talking. And then I learned how to do interviews. I got better at it. Then I got an agent and this. But just you got to really want it and do something every day. Was there ever a moment in your career when you didn't want it anymore because not a, along with the acting came, came fame and celebrity and everything that comes along with that? Uh, yeah, I think there was. It, um, like towards the late 80s, uh, the, there was that. Because it, it really, right around Jerry Lee Lewis, it really kind of got uh, out of control because I think I got out of control a bit, you know, with, with the blow and all that stuff. And, and that the life of the rich and famous in Hollywood 80s, fabulous. You know, it thing. And it was so many, you know, I had people, uh, you know, outside my door everywhere. And uh, uh, it was just overwhelming what was coming at me. And uh, so I, I, I asked God to take, take it away. And he kind of did. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so careful what you wish like, for. Hey, man, what, what happened? I didn't mean everything, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been fine. I've had a very, very lucky life. And, and I, the thing is, is that they don't teach you how to be a success. Yeah. You know, uh, nobody gets uh, lessons in how to be a success. And, uh, you know, you get a, maybe a pat on the back if you're a failure or whatever. But uh, it's, it's, so it's, it's, well, at least for me, I, I grew up in, you know, lower middle class Houston, and uh, my dad was an electrician, and, and uh, uh, so it, learning how to be, to be a success uh, was was kind of hard, because you feel like you don't deserve it, you feel like, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of feelings that go with it. And you struck fairly, fairly young, right? Uh, yeah, I guess I did, really, you know, Breaking Away was, uh, I was 24. Also, so we that's, say Breaking you know, Away, that's if you very haven't lucky. seen it, it's the best movie. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you didn't interrupt, I love Breaking Away. Yeah. I feel like we're talking as one voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cut off your personal story to tell uh, everybody I, Breaking I, Away no, is the best no, movie no. of all time. Um, what was that period like where you said... God took it away. Was was it like a dry spell in terms of roles that you were getting, or was it something else that he took away? What no, you- no, it was really, I mean, it was a very kind of height. It was like, I, you know, like 500 people. I was rocking my trailer outside my door, and it was, you know, I, had to have, I had to have the uh, the state troopers that escort me to the set. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt like, a, I, get, I guess I kind of felt like, uh, the job of an a- of an actor is to observe life, and I felt like life was observing me, and it was kind of felt like a distance from my own life. You know, I could you know wherever I went with like if I go someplace with my friends, I didn't have kids at that time, I wasn't married, but if I go someplace with my friends or uh, my family, I uh, you know there'd be this tugging, and I and I I really didn't have 
didn't get to just experience my own life. You know, it was, my head was over. And then the blow didn't help me. <laughs> but, so I got rid of that. And, uh, you know, and uh, then things got worse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, and uh, so I kind of spent the '90s, you know, kind of, um, kind of quiet until, uh, but Great still roles. scratching, but still scratching, you know. To, and uh, and uh, you know, I think I really kind of started with the Parent Trap, you know, doing that. That thing started to kind of come back, and uh, only this time I was, I, I felt, uh, you know, a lot more even about it. Yeah, I learned how to not take things so seriously. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, that's really, to it's a really it. hard it's, thing. It's, it's, so, it's so easy once you do that. Yeah. Next question from the audience. Hey, Dennis. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, I know that throughout your career you've played a, a variety of roles. I was just wondering, um, like, uh, what, are, what are the things that you look for in, um, in those roles, like uh, whether it's on film or TV? So, I'm sorry, the last part was, uh, what do I look for in those roles? In those roles, yeah. Uh, uh, I look for a really good story. When I read a script, it's the, only, it's the first and only time that I'm ever going to be an audience member reading this script, which is really seeing the movie. And um, so I, that's, I want it to take me someplace. I want to get involved. I want to care. I want to be learn something. I want to laugh. I want to whatever it is, you know, feel. That's what I want to feel. And... Uh, then the next thing would be the character, of course, and, you know, and who is this guy, and uh, and then then it's about who's doing it, yeah, who's directing it, and uh, but if you have a good story, that's that's a really great place to start. When did you learn that it was going to be about one of the things was going to be about who's directing it? Like when did you realize like oh. Being around someone I can work with is a huge part of this. Well, that was like when I first started, that was pretty much the only question you asked. Because, I, you know, I started in the 70s, and that was the, the decade of the directors, which they call the golden age, you know, where you had, you know, Coppola and Scorsese and, uh, uh, you know, just the, the, the directors back then were just incredible. And uh, they were stars. So you too. wanted to be in their movies, you know. Yeah, they were stars. The director was star, yeah. in fact. And it's kind of a rarity now that that's the case. We have a couple of them, but not like we did in the 70s. Yeah. They're, they're not as celebrated. No, not at no. all. I think I have time for one more question right here. Hello, Dennis. Thank you for being here. So speaking of, to pick up on the role playing, which, uh, which particular role added during your career would, uh, did you tap, in, tap into the most? Like, what will we relate to you in your, in your uh, personal which, life? Which role over the course of your career yeah. do you relate to the most? Uh, relate to the most? I, my favorite role is, is Gordo Cooper in The Right Stuff. Because when I was a kid, I grew up in Houston, which was Space City. And, you know, I was born in 54. And so in first grade, they brought in the television. We watched, you know, John Glenn go up. And that was it. It replaced wanting to be a cowboy or anything else. And... Uh, Gordo Cooper happened to be my, the original seven, he happened to be my favorite astronaut. I just liked the name Gordo, and he was the youngest. And, and uh, then, the, you know, years go by, and uh, uh, the book comes out, and read the book, like, in one sitting. Uh, and uh, I, if they ever make a movie about this, I want to play Gordo. I have to. And then, well, you know, I went in for the interview, and it, it, then I waited around four more months, and I got it. I couldn't believe it. It's one of those times, and then doing it was was even more so. I went out and I got my. I I learned to fly. I was afraid to fly, but I figured I, if I'm going to play as an astronaut, I got to learn to fly. If anything, just to handle the radio, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my pilot's license, and uh, out of that, I fly jets now, and uh, um, I, uh, I mean, Chuck Yeager. I don't know if you guys know who Chuck Yeager is, but you, you know, American, br living, breathing American hero. And, uh, and he was like John Wayne. He was on the set every day, and we were just, it took nine months to film, and I still didn't want it then. So it was, it was incredible. Who directed, was it Philip Kaufman? Yeah, Philip yeah. Kaufman. What was he like working with? He was one of those directors from the 70s that you wanted to be in his movies. He was just, he was uh, such a great actor's director. You know, everyone loved him. Great for men, great for women, and uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Imagine being able to take nine months to make a movie now. Uh, no. <laughs> no, you'd be sleeping with the fishes if it took you nine months to do a movie now. Um, Dennis, so uh, Dennis Quaid and the Sharks is going on tour with ZZ Top in May, right? right? You yeah. can look for dates, I think, uh, mainly in Texas on, on the West Coast. If you're, if you're there, you know, look for ZZ Top dates featuring Dennis Quaid and the Sharks. And yeah, we're going to be on the West Coast at the Belly Up and down in Solana Beach, which is great. It's a great place. And then uh, we're also, we're going to be uh, do a Texas tour, so it'll be Right fun. on. Like, and Houston, Fortitude, Dallas. the first season is streaming right now on Amazon, and the second season starts streaming on Friday, right? It starts streaming on Friday. You can get all 10 episodes right away. And it's a great story. I mean, season two is a great story unto itself. You don't necessarily have to watch season one to do it. But, I, you know, if you watch one or two episodes of season two, you're going you're gonna to want to go back and, and watch season one. And you really will. 100%. I guarantee you. It's a great story. Dennis Quaid, everybody. Dennis, thank you so much for being here.